Hello and good morning. Um, so there's a couple things going on here. I am in Texas for the holidays and uh, we decided, I decided that it was time to do a few improvements to the van. So um, first off, the bench area over here. So we have this counter here. Um, obviously it is different from the other side, which is an actual counter. So it's kind of a lost waste of space over here. This is um, kind of just where the clothes go that are like too clean to put in the wash and too dirty to put back into the closet and put it away. So the clothes just stands there and makes a pile when instead it could be some useful space. What I'm gonna do is put in one or two drawers. I'm not uh, completely decided on that yet. Raise the top up to the counter height of the other side. So I'll have more counter space and more storage space because I really don't have a lot of space for uh, plates and cups and that sort of stuff. Next up is this area here. So that area has never been finished. It's just been exposed insulation this whole time. So um, I think it's finally time that we do something about that. So I bought bendable plywood, which I did not know existed until um, I don't know, a week or two ago, just something I saw on Instagram. I just got this bendy plywood and it like bends, like really bends. And uh, so I bought a sheet of bendable plywood for a whopping $81, including tax, um, for an 8x4 sheet of bendable plywood. So that's a thing that exists and it's not the cheapest, but after calling around a lot, it's also not that easy to find. So I had to kind of just get it. So I haven't really been sure how to do that curve there. And now I think I can finally do it. So I'll finally be able to not have to lay in bed and look at insulation. The other thing is this. So this here, is my slider door, obviously. A couple things. So I do have the two max air fans. It gets a decent ventilation in here, but I wouldn't say there's a breeze. So when this door is shut, um, I feel like there could be more ventilation in here. Also, when I'm driving, this is one giant blind spot. So if I come to an angle to a main road and I have to look out my right window past Sailor, I can't see anything. I'm kind of guessing and listening for traffic, which is not the best. So what I'm going to be doing is putting in a giant window here in the slider. So that'll be cool. And in addition, this top of the closet here, this has a lot of potential, but it all kind of slides forward when I drive because it's just too high of a stack. So I want to put in one more shelf across here so that I can um, have an upper and lower it's just gonna be easier to find things in here and hopefully things don't fall as much. Last but not least, I wanna put in a LED light bar in the front of the van. When I got the van, it had crazy dark tints on the front um, windshield and side windows, which is good because when I pull up to a place, um, no one can really see me in here. So no one knows who's inside the van. So I do like that. I do wanna keep the tints for that reason. But driving at night is, really hard. I need more light. So uh, especially driving around in parks at night where there are no street lights, which you don't realize how dark that is until um, you leave a city and there's no light. It's really dark. So um, a little extra headlight action um, will be really helpful, especially late at night trying to find dispersed campsites. So a lot of different small upgrades, but things that after living in the van for a while, I feel like are important upgrades. I think it's gonna make a big difference in here. Thank you for shopping at the Home Depot. All right, made my purchases. One of probably, I don't know, 50 trips to Home Depot, I'm gonna guess. I don't know what the countertop's gonna be yet, but at least I can build the supports under it. So I've taken out the fridge already so I can access underneath here. I'm gonna take out this um, countertop thing, desktop thing. That's not 
love it. I had to clamp these overnight. This is the box to build on top of the refrigerator cabinet. But um, drilling through this cheap pine, every single one cracked. So I had to glue and clamp them overnight. Taking those off now so I can finish assembling them. And then I'll start working on the drawers. back out here again for drawer construction today. I have a tip if you've never done this before. So if you have to cut a bunch of pieces that have to be the same length, um, like these one by threes here, what I recommend doing is cutting your first piece, measuring and cutting your first piece, and then using that first piece as your template for all the other pieces. Trace the end, cut that one, but then go back to that first piece uses your template because otherwise things kind of shift over time, uh, taking into account the blade width and all that stuff. Yeah, that's it. First thing I have to do is remove this board that's up here so we can see what's behind it so I can plan what materials I need to get to uh, put in the window when it comes. And the hope is that I'll be able to use the same board, put it back in, fresh coat of paint, just with a window in it. That's what's back there. That's gonna be what we cut through, so that's gonna be a mission. Well, I kind of forgot that there was a lot of insulation back here. It's kind of funny living in a van and uh, you only see the outside shell and you yourself forget um, how much went in behind the scenes. I built this and I totally just didn't even, so I have to remove this insulation is all I'm saying. And I don't quite know what's the best way to do this, but I guess we're just gonna start peeling things out. I'm gonna try to save as much insulation as I can. We'll see if I can save anything and use it afterwards. So I have to remove this support thing that goes down the middle here. Um, the other ones in the walls are different, so I'm not quite sure how to do this because this attaches to this. This is all one piece, so I'm gonna have to cut that somehow. Okay, so here's a fun new development in this van rebuild thing that's happening. We've been working hard trying to get the um, countertop extension on top of the refrigerator happening. So that's pretty much built. There's still more work to be done on it, but we we're kind of rushing that for a couple reasons. Uh, one, I had ordered a window, a sliding window to put into the slider door in the van. And um, that was coming. And so I knew I had to finish this so that I could be ready to do that. And the reason we were kind of trying to really plan this is because there is a freeze coming, which is kind of rare here in Houston where my brother lives. So there's a lot of prep that has to happen for that as well. So we've been kind of on this like tight timeline of things that have to happen. Yesterday I get the window and it doesn't fit. It's too big. So I had to figure out how to send that back, which is not gonna be cheap and um, order a new one, but now I don't really know when that's gonna happen because um, I just found out I'm on a shorter timeline than I thought. I thought I still had like three weeks before I had to be back in the park. I was aiming for January 15th. And then I find out yesterday, it's looking like a January 3rd start date. So now our timeline is being pushed up. And then in the midst of all that, I walk out yesterday 
and I look under the van and I notice oil underneath the van. So we start looking into it and I found information online that pretty much says this is a really common issue with uh, Ram Promasters and what happens is the oil cooler, either there's a cracked casing that will leak oil out of that or it is more likely, I think, the um, oil cooler gaskets and there's like a set of five gaskets and o-rings in there that have gone bad problem is it's like very poorly manufactured and where it is the front of the promaster is so narrow that it's really hard to get in there to see what's going on and it's hard to work in there so um, essentially no matter what of those two options it is it's the same part it's the oil cooler so we have to get in there somehow problem is this is so poorly engineered that um, the bolts sit on top, water gets in there and collects, and then those bolts get so rusty and hard to remove that they have to, in a lot of cases, break the top of that, the giant plastic piece that goes on top. I don't know what it's called. They have to break that to get into it and then replace that. We are going to try to do it ourselves. That's a big question mark. So we're gonna open it and kind of check it out and see what the situation is. If not, we're gonna take it in. So we're waiting on a quote from the Dodge dealership as well, ordering parts, all that fun stuff. And there's a freeze coming. Five, three, seven, one, one. It all came down to one stripped bolt. Luckily, it was the first thing that we had to get through in order to get down to um, the oil cooler. So we didn't get that far into the process before we realized we weren't gonna be able to do this ourselves. This happened to be like two days before Christmas. So we weren't sure if we were gonna be able to find someone who was going to be able to do it. And now I was on this new timeline. I wasn't gonna be able to stick around as long. So I needed someone to do it pretty quickly. And luckily this guy came recommended. Yeah. Yeah, you're oh. torquing on that right there. So. Yeah. so when you're torquing on this, this whole thing Try to see this. Yeah. And all you have is, hold on, these are coolant and this is oil. Uh, this is oil and this is oil. Yeah. So these right here end up leaking because those are just O rings. This port goes in, but these just sit on the top. Yeah, it relies so within on the time, yeah. within time, it just breaks loose. And then these aluminum base bolts are aluminum, a light, light uh, metal. So what, it, what happens also is with the heat and the cold and you removing it, they expand, yeah. they stretch. Yeah. So I picked up the van and then it was time to just get back to all those other projects I was working on. We continued working on the new cabinet with the drawers and the new countertop. Nice, deep drawers, so much deeper than what I have. And that's gonna be so helpful just for mugs and like stacks of things and spatulas that get stuck. So now we just need a countertop here, paint, some polyurethane in here, some drawer fronts here with poles, and then this all gets mounted onto the refrigerator box that's down there with the pullout down here for the fridge. Obviously the butcher block countertop on the other side would have been ideal to do the same thing, but I didn't wanna buy an entire length of butcher block countertop. Uh, first of all, I was trying to keep weight down. I didn't want another thick slab of wood. They sell that stuff in six foot or eight foot lengths. I think I needed like three or four feet. So I didn't want to waste all that extra footage. And those ones you buy by the foot, those are usually solid wood and they are thick and they are heavy. And I just didn't want to put all that weight into the van. I decided I wanted to do planks of wood but I wanted them to be smooth like a countertop, but I still wanted you to be able to see that it was different pieces of wood. So the way I did that was I picked pieces of wood that had a little bit of different variations and colors in them and laid them out in a way where you could kind of see the difference between them. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I decided I wanted to do something that wasn't an exact match. I don't like when things are like, she was trying to match it, but she didn't quite get there. I'd rather just do something different and have it go together rather than trying to be a match when it's not really a match. And then I wanted to do it a white, like a whitewash. But I didn't want to get like whitewash stain because that ends up being kind of like pink tinted, like this 90s kind of whitewashed feel and that's not what I was going for. I wanted it to be white, white, just sheer. I decided instead to get a quart of paint in the same color as the white that I had done in the van previously and then just water it down so I could try different proportions of paint and water. I did a little paint swatch test strip. In the end, I think I went with a 50-50 paint to water ratio and that ended up being perfect. The frame that goes around the edge, I wanted that to be a wood color to try to match the butcher block on the other side. I did the same thing where I tried different ratios of water to stain because it was a water-based stain. So you get that white plank feeling in the middle and then you have the wood piece that goes around the outside that matches or coordinates with the butcher block on the other side. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Then there was the installation of the LED light bar in the front of the van. The first thing we had to do was run the electrical components from the battery, which is basically underneath the driver's seat in the ProMaster, through the firewall. We had to remove a little cap to get through there and then run it in through the engine. There we go. Yep, now I got it. Down and to the light in the front. So of course you have to make sure it's not um, in the way of any moving parts inside the engine. Once we had it run through there, we had to put the light bar on the front. Now the thing about the light bar, a lot of people cut out a plastic piece inside the um, plastic grill part of the ProMaster and they put the light in there, but I didn't really want to cut anything more than I have to. What I did was in addition, I got this, it's like a front license plate thing. You can still put a front license plate there, but then it kind of comes up and over, and then that light can sit on top of there, so it's just a bolted-in system. And it fit almost perfectly, but we had to just drill a couple holes to make it work. So relatively easy to actually install it. The mounts on it are plastic, which makes me a little nervous. I expected them to be like aluminum, maybe. They've been holding up well so far, so hopefully it stays that way. It comes with a switch, of course, that you install inside the cab. A lot of vehicles like 4Runners and things like that have little places you can like pop out these plastic pieces to put in a switch. The ProMaster doesn't have that, so I had to find a place that made sense. Right above the fuse box, there's this little cubby that just, I don't know, I guess you can kind of put some things in there if you want like extra storage. I opened that little fuse compartment. So I could take out that little plastic box. I cut out the back of that plastic into a little rectangle, which would fit the switch, ran the wires. <laughs> kind of nice, it has like a blue LED light in it so I can see when it's on. So hopefully it reminds me to turn it off when cars are coming. This light is so helpful. Driving in snow, driving at night, trying to find dispersed campsites. I knew I was gonna use it a lot, but I think I use it even more than what I thought I was gonna be using it. It is really bright. I can't use it if there's cars coming towards me or people walking towards me or anything like that. Because <laughs> it'll definitely blind them. Now, because of that whole debacle with the window, I ended up just putting the insulation loose back inside the door. The window has not been ordered yet. I don't know when that's gonna happen. Hopefully I could maybe get it done this summer or in the spring, but um, I don't have any solid plans on that yet. I am still staring at insulation when I lay in bed because I never got to that corner. I left all that bendable plywood at my brother's house, so that is waiting some other time. I know this is very 
anticlimactic. I did manage to put that shelf into the upper part of the closet. I ended up using that um, old countertop that was on top of the refrigerator. I cut that to make that new shelf. So I do have the shelf organization part done. The cabinet is almost finished. I still have to do the polyurethane on the countertop to seal it. And I still have to paint the top of the cabinet. I kind of just hit the road because like I mentioned, the timeline got pushed up. So I had to just take everything as is and leave. So I got a lot done, but not everything that I wanted to do. It would really like to have that window in before it starts getting hot again. I know that this is not one of those like grand reveal videos, but you know what? That's reality. Not everything got done. It's never finished in the van. I feel like I could just keep coming up with things to do and improvements and just taking things I've done and making them better. So it's, it's an ongoing process, but I like projects, so I am totally fine with that. So I hope you liked this video on, um, you know, more projects you can do in the van and more ways to spend your money on your van. So I guess like subscribe and stuff. I'm gonna stop talking. This is when I start rambling and no one wants to see this. Here we go. Cool. This um, oil cooler thing. Stress. Uh, let's pause this. Almost like planks to try to match the. And again, I um, thicker from the front. Put in the goodbye. Mm -hmm.